So hello then, hello and welcome back. I'll just set the capture recording so you can see some of this on-screen footage that I'm seeing while we're talking. Anyway, thank you once again. A massive response to the question that I asked during yesterday's video. Um, just really what the uh, viewer audience is looking for when they come to my channel. And just so that you come into the channel and there's things that you're, that you're interested in watching that are actually there. So it just really helps me understand where I'm building different parts of the channel and what people are still interested in watching. But anyway, uh, one of the things I wanted to uh, discuss today before we get on to looking at the 488, I thought I'd take the Ferrari out, uh, which was one thing that someone had asked for. Uh, I think it was pole position um, on my YouTube channel, the next car and track. He did mention uh, Zandvoort, but I'm still yet to drive at Zandvoort as well as Kyle Army as well. Uh, Misano, there's a number of circuits on the game that I've still not tried along with a lot of the cars to be honest. There's so much to get into this video. Obviously we're still waiting for that patch um, that's going to hopefully solve a lot of the uh, feel of the car through the wheel along with a few of the balance issues and everyone going on about um, optimizing it more with 60 frames it would make such a difference i don't know where they could cut back on the simulation to maybe uh, not make it so labor intensive for the frames per second it would really make a massive difference uh, but yeah uh, one of the things i wanted to mention is in this hood option and as you can see here uh, just looking at the track competency section i do recommend having this on especially if you're new to the game it certainly helps me uh, build within um, new circuits that I'm visiting. Obviously you can change it through consistency, uh, car control, automatic or competency and I have it on the track competency for now while I'm learning new circuits uh, but that definitely is a feature that I think is worth um, having on as well. So we're going to be looking at um, Paul Ricard, uh, another circuit which I spent a bit of time at yesterday in the Ferrari as you can see there, I've set a 155.7. Uh, Not quite sure, it says the real record there is a 139.9. Not quite sure I could believe that in a GT3 car. Um, whether it's a shorter section of the circuit, I've got no idea, but that is some difference in pace. Um, but yeah, obviously looking at the ghost car, I've got the ghost car enabled and I don't know why it's showing use ghost car saved for this. Um, let's have a little look. At, I'll see if I can use that one. Uh, but ghost car is enabled. I do like running the ghost. It does give you an idea where you're faster and where you're slower. Obviously you've got the track delta that's really interesting. Uh, for me anyway, when I'm setting cars up, I'm very dependent on looking at the track delta to see whether adjustments that I've made make a difference, especially in certain sectors, maybe on the long straights, if you've adjusted the downforce, obviously you can feel it through the corners, but how much of a difference is it making on the straights? But yeah, I thought I would do this video um, just to get a feel for the um, Ferrari and uh, obviously for pole position as well, just to give you a, a heads up on how I'm setting up the Ferrari. But I really enjoyed um, Paul Ricard. I, whenever I watch the, the uh, Formula One, I just think, oh no, Paul Ricard, another boring race. Uh, but driving this circuit and this particular layout, I know it's slightly different to the Formula One layout. They break up the long straight, but let's get into it. Let's have a look at what the Ferrari's got to give. Obviously, I'm doing a new structure to the videos, especially for these longer videos. I'll be breaking it down so that you can use the chapters and it will, you can either watch it in its entirety and you can learn from the initial part of the setup or you can skip through each section. Hopefully the videos will run perfectly so that you can watch maybe the introduction uh, straight into the setup and then watch the flying lap. If that's all you're interested in, that's great. You should be able to do that uh, from these new videos or if you want to watch right from the very start where I'm um, making small adjustments, learning more about the car, um, obviously giving a bit more of a track guide as well, then all that will be there. But you'll be able to just skip through each section of the video and use it as you will. <clears throat> so let's get into this setup. 
So this is the initial setup and as per usual I'm going to run the aggressive setup. Um, as you can see, um, if I go, let's just go into here and you can see that there is the setup uh, that I was using uh, just yesterday I was having a little run and I managed a 155.7 around the circuit but for the start of this video we're just going to be running um, the aggressive setup which is how I came into the initial setup and the only things that I'm going to change um, through any of these videos initially now is just going to be um, the brake balance or the brake pads. Uh, I'm not going to look at anything else in the setup before I start it. That's all I'm going to change is the brake pads and then we're going to take a drive around the circuit from there. So I'll just uh, turn that down a bit. Um, I know I do like the engine on quite loud when I'm racing by myself. So yeah, initially we're just going to get a feel for the car around uh, Paul Ricard. How does it feel? It's got a lovely sound to this engine, it really has. <coughs> So just nice and slowly on this initial lap. You can feel straight away, if, if you run these laps nice and slowly on, on the first sort of learning of each circuit, you can feel so much more detail through the wheel. It goes really light through a bit of a bump on the inside, really hooking up on this kerb as well. It really light through the wheel, lots of understeer. Lots of understeer through the front, through there, a bit of a bump on the way in. And then we've got this fast section. A uh, long, long straight. Now I've seen on other videos, um, someone else was hitting 165 at the end of this straight. I have tried so many different variables Oh, sorry 175 I've tried so many different variables <laughs> to reach that 175 which I actually just hit there so whether it's dependent on wind I've got no idea that's just thrown me completely because yesterday I was only managing to hit 173 so maybe it's down to one of the conditions, I'm really not sure now. It's thrown me massively. But yeah, just just driving this circuit, just really slowly for the initial outlaps. Obviously we're building temperature in the tyres. And you're just sort of getting a feel for the car at lower speeds. It did really feel so much different the other day. That driving at a slower speed, it just sort of heightens your senses a little bit. Understeer, understeer. Not wanting to take too much of that curve. Just unsettles the car. I think, I think the initial the initial thought is just understeer and then we've got, that was my fault really, changing gear there but lots of understeer through here understeer, understeer, understeer <coughs> still sort of high speed understeer through there, it's just pushing through the corner Just waiting for that red line in project cars too, you used to change really early in this car. Doesn't benefit you in a Seto Corsa. Use all the rev range. So 175 really. Just doesn't reach it. And then lots of understeer through there. Running nice and wide. It's like a progressive corner, you sort of change your gear as you come round here. But I think it's just a lot of understeer. 
understeer, 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 and then back on the power. Lots of understeer, just pushing out to the corner really. And then oversteer, oversteer, oversteer. So that so that's the that's the thing at the moment um, with this game. I cannot feel the edge of that grip. I just can't feel it. It's just understeer, 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 bam, oversteer. And you just there isn't the detail at the moment in the force feedback to just understand really what the car's doing at low speed corners. So let's just go again. Breaking just at the hundred yard board. Again there, lots of understeer. Tiny bit of that curve. Breaking again just at the hundred yard board. Understeer, understeer. I like to bring it down into first gear here. Max out first gear and then I know I'm turning in into second, lots of understeer, back on the power, just cutting that apex and then you're just holding, holding the gear out right to the very end, I think it's about 160 miles an hour before you're changing gear, yeah 161 and then hopefully reaching 175 before we're looking to turn into this corner. 174. Oh, just dropped it too early. Just needed to hold the brake pedal a little bit. Just coming down through the gears as you come round there. It doesn't feel too bad initially the Ferrari, it really doesn't. So let's try and go for a bit of a flatter outlap. So 159. It's quite a good circuit this, it really is, it feels better than I thought it would do. allowed me to run really wide there I thought I'd have got a track penalty there but you see the first lap I wasn't even pushing and I was still managing to set quite a good delta oh barely even up on my previous lap Didn't really want to change gear there. Just on the edge of grip as you can see. It really is a fine sensation through the wheel. Whether there's grip or not. <clears throat> so as you can see I barely barely made any headway really on that lap 158 let's go again much deeper through the brake better exit
so it's a bit feisty on the uh, on the acceleration with the traction control running I think it's running at 2-2 two, two. oh no 3-3 three, three it's running at just down the bottom right hand corner there you see the brake discs never really reaching temperature the tyres well off temperature really so there's lots of adjustment in the setup to do there already just trying to add a little bit of acceleration to get some of that grip back as you look, lost it in the mid corner oh, it was a bit of a fine cut really that wasn't it very out of control out onto the dirt there terrible <coughs> So the balance of the car is not too bad initially, it's running wide a little bit, understeer wise. Obviously you can see we cut the, cut the trap there, let's, uh, let's try and put another lap in, try and get a better lap than what we've got, so we've got something to build from. <coughs> because we were well up on that last lap just really tentative through there <coughs> Like I say, if you change gear too early, it doesn't benefit you in the Ferrari. It used to be such a difference on project cars too. Changing gear would really change how fast the car was altogether really. It had a really low gear change. Try and get through this corner with as much speed as we can. marbles that's better could easily take a, a second off that one so So this one we're going to do uh, for the tyre temperatures. Because the tyre delta resets every lap when you're doing um, hot lapping. I'm just going to run quite a bit of this lap just to get some heat into the tyres. Just so we've got some tyre delta to go on. We're a long way up there though as well, three tenths up. Much better entry to that first corner. So it is best to sort of try and find the limits of the aggressive setup before you start making any changes or else you're just never going to know really whether they benefit you or not. I'm just sort of hovering on the brake pedal there and on the accelerator just on the edge of grip so let's just stop it there then um, return to the garage 
you can see you've got 39 degrees, 7 kilometers wind going across the car. Be interesting to see um, during yesterday is just how much wind there was. I'm sure it was 15 kilometers yesterday, so maybe that does play a little bit of a part in how much speed you can carry down that straight. That was quite interesting. Um, so yeah, return back to the garage, 57.6. And uh, let's have a look at this setup detail. So obviously you can see the track temperature, um, 39 degrees, and the tyre temperature at its hottest uh, was 26.8 for this front tyre. And we're looking for that 27.5 magic figure really. So we, I reckon we're gonna go up six, six points on that one. So one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're looking, th that's its hot temperature and the uh, 25.4 is its cold temperature. Um, so when it's actually at its hottest, we want it to be five degrees higher than the last readings that we can see there. So going across to the other side and we're a long way off there, um, 7.13. So we're gonna go up, say 12 clicks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve clicks. The rear one uh, will go up, um, yeah, ten clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And across to the other one, and we'll go up, um, let's go up eight on that, so we should be at 74, 27.4. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Yeah, we're going at eight, weren't we? Um, so what else can we see? The rear, rear um, camber angles. I did mention before you want the outer temperature. So you've got 91 on the outside of the tire, 97 on the inside of the tire. You're always going to want the inside of the tire to run hotter. Uh, because the angle of the tyre hitting the tarmac is going to be like that really. So when you start leaning the car through the corner, you want in the 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 car the tyre to be being full contact with the road really. So it's always going to run hotter. Obviously on the straights the tyre is running like this, and only through the corners is it flattening out. Um, but as you can see, there's a difference on the other side of the car. Um, we've got five degrees difference on that side. We've got six degrees difference on that side. So obviously there's less cornering going through the right hand side of the car. Obviously you've got the long, long left handers, uh, high speed left hander after the long straight. There's more left handers because the circuit is in rotation wise. It's going clockwise round. So you're driving around the outside of a, the circuit. So it, predominantly it's going to be a more left handed uh, temperature induced uh, through the left hand side of the car. Um, so looking at the front tyres, like I said, probably want about four at the rear. Um, so we could reduce the cambers a tiny bit. Um, just because of that factor. So I reduce it a little bit more on this side of the car uh, because it's leaning over a lot more. Um, so I'm trying to get the tyre a lot flatter or less camber on that side of the car. If that's right, we'll go with 33.3 anyway. Um, what else can we do at the front? So we've got 8 degrees difference on the left hand side and 6 degrees difference on the right hand side. And that's about right anyway. You want between about 10, between something like 10 and 8 degrees at the front so they're probably fine just left as they are. Traction control was kicking in quite a lot um, just through some of the um, slower corners getting the grip on the way out so rather than mess with traction control 3 which was kicking in let's just try and reduce some of the power that's being delivered so traction control d uh, 1 or TC uh, determines when the, the power is going to be cut and traction control 2 determines how much power is going to be cut. So we're going to deliver less power to the tyres uh, with a higher number. 
So we'll try that. And the ABS, I don't know why it's on six. Um, because if you look at the conditions, we're running in optimal conditions. So I guess the more rubber that's down, um, the higher the figure, uh, which doesn't seem to translate really uh, because looking at the, d the conditions there if you imagine full wet as it gets greener through the ABS I generally want to run more ABS in the wet so unless the figure going up the way is less ABS the more it's rubbered in I'm still learning so I thought if say for example we we're running two ABS that would be less ABS being applied so you've got more chance of locking up but in looking at this graph the higher the number the more locking up you would get um, anyway let's move along let's try leaving it on six I didn't really find an issue with the braking at all um, mechanical grip um, I don't really want to mess with that just yet uh, we're running a very high preload there 250 newton meters generally find a lot of cars uh, gt3 cars running in and around the 100 region and um, so that's quite interesting to see really don't like it when i see the the bumps like that uh, the the bump is higher than the rebound um, i need to do more testing on that section and that's quite interesting to see that the ride height at the rear is actually lower than the front ride height so the rake of the car is the other way around really most cars run with the nose sort of pointing into the ground so you've got lots of aero happening on the rear wing so that's quite interesting to see but we did remember that the brakes weren't were getting were never actually reaching temperature and um, so let's just close those out one at the front and the rear brakes it seems to get used a lot less um, so let's just try that as a, as an initial change to the setup see if we can get the tires working in a better um, window and um, see if those setup changes make a little bit of a difference so just look at the brake balance there if we click up so we're running 60% on the brake balance. That might be something we adjust whilst we're on the move to see if we can get a better feel um, for how the car changes under brake balance changes. So let's give it a whirl. <coughs> so instantly across the line we're at 2.75 on the front right tyre. So just ease yourself into it, you're not going flat out for the lap straight away. See if you can feel the changes. You almost want the changes to be effortless and just because you've made those changes they naturally make driving the car easier. You're not really wanting to adjust your driving style too much, you're wanting the changes that you've made to the car to make driving the car easier. feels quicker too late on the brake my error so I'll go again that was my error can see anyway that the tyre pressures are just getting a little bit too hot although I have seen people running in the 28s 
lots of out of control through there and the brake so definitely the brake bias might be something I'm going to be adjusting quite soon it just feels too much towards the rear of the car <coughs> nice through there so nearly half a second through set to one really <coughs> Just holding on to that gear. Still not getting really much temperature through the brakes. Just on the edge of grip there. So a few subtle changes are into the one fifty six point three. Just a bit too hot on that front tyre. Much better run through there. The ghost had anyway. Still looking at that right left tyre really. Just nowhere near temperature. Front right tyre is a little bit too hot. And you see what difference the tyre temperatures are making. too much of a gear there just feels like it's pulling the car so let's just go back and have a look at these tire pressures because they're much warmer through that last section and this front one was getting too hot in the initial section of the lap so don't look too bad at the minute but let's just bring that I know we can do it on the move but while we're in here I'm just going to add 1% to that brake bias at the front just feels like it's turning the car too much on corner entry and that's inducing uh, losing that rear end of the car so let's have another go for that traction control doesn't seem too bad The brakes were getting a bit cold.
just look at that delta. Six tenths up on the first lap. We've not touched the setup at all really. Very minor changes. Just on the outer out the edges of grip there. Are we into the 155s? 155.9. We've changed next to nothing. See what happens if you touch that curb, just really unsettles the car, it really does. If I try and carry second gear through there, I just don't think it turns the car enough. And again, getting on the curb through that section just unsettles the car. So a few key areas through that first section, um, it just felt like we were losing um, a little bit of grip through the rear of the car. Um, so what can we do to make the rear of the car more stable? Already running one at the rear on the anti-roll bar, so generally you're trying to make the car softer. Uh, to make give it more grip at the rear so let's look at the options to making it softer we could reduce the rear um, wheel rates and I just do that one adjustment and that is it let's just go straight back out and uh, see if that makes any benefit just looking for some more rear grip through some of these corners like this one. Just when you're on the edge, it just feels like it's on the edge of grip. See me trail breaking right into the corner. I'm not going to complete that lap because I've gone wide. But you could see we were up a tiny bit there. It's all these little hundreds and thousands that make a difference now. You're looking for small changes with small rewards really, once you start getting up to the faster end of the lap times. So it doesn't really benefit me hitting that curve at all. If you can avoid it, do so.
you see there just losing traction at the rear you're really wanting to maintain grip all the time any amount of sliding is the car not going forward see if you've lost any of that straight line speed which it's negligible really thousands really nice feeling through there though and you see we're just losing that rear end there that's the issue really we're understeering here very much on the edge of grip Let's try again. You can see the tyres getting a bit hot, really, on the left hand side of the car. <coughs> really trying to avoid that curb. Just letting it run really out to the outskirts of the other curb back there. <laughs> I don't know the name of any of these corners. Oh, just cut too much. So I certainly made a difference cutting the inside of that curve. And then just losing the rear end. Don't think hitting that curve would do me any favours at all. So I'm just going to go into the garage at that point and see what the tyres are doing again. This front one's getting a little bit too hot. This back one's not getting hot enough, and the, the, other, the, the other two are all right. Um, so what can we do about that rear end uh, just stepping out at high speed? Well, I'd say most of it's got to be down um, to the aerodynamics, really, um, because we're traveling at such high speed. We could reduce, let's see what difference that makes, 2.3, lowering that's 2.4, so 2.2, it's so unpredictable. So the higher we raise the front, the less aerodynamic is going on the front of the car. So we're at 57, 2.3, if we come across and add one click of the rear wing that takes off quite a bit so do we add rear wing or do we raise the front of the car so let's see what we can do three clicks on the front ride height to make the rake more like this or we can do one click of the rear wing fundamentally that's giving us the same aero balance so let's just see what difference that makes to how the car performs at high speed 
as soon as aero the uh, rate seems to have such a big effect in this game looking to get into the 155s <coughs> very unstable on the exit doesn't particularly feel better Is it going to reduce our top speed? Or we'll make it better? Still in 174. Nice exit. Bit of a tighter line through there. Marginally faster. The blink of an eye, really, the difference. That felt nice through there, though. Felt like I caught a lot of that corner then. But we're into the 155s. Still small changes, I think. Just unbalance the car there too much. So we got a good little lead though. Just ruin that really the last sector. So let's go again. Just not slowing the car enough for that. So I don't think that was uh, the best attack of that corner. Oops. And I like how you can still start this lap just because that's been invalidated from the previous lap. I hate that on project cars too. Again, just too deep on the brake. 
just really uh, impacts the next corner. I did have a nice run through there in the first time. Been three tenths behind on every time I've come through there. Just scruffy really, just pushing the car too far. See, I was much earlier on the brakes into the first part of the corner, but you'd get a much better exit. And then I ruin it up. That's all right. I'm happy if I'm staying with the first go through there. It felt quite competitive. 162 before I changed. There we go. So 155.5 and we've made very little changes uh, to the setup. So just looking over the setup, if you've been obviously through the video, um, I'm just going to fly through this fairly quickly. So we've made very little changes to any of the dampers. A uh, tiny change, one wheel rate change on the suspension. A change to the traction control TC1 and a few changes to the tyres temperature wise just to get them running at a better temperature. And the area we didn't even touch the rear wing. So I'll leave the setup where it is. That's uh, for those of you that are interested in a few subtle changes and then uh, we'll continue the video uh, where I've spent a little bit more time away from the video itself and uh, just putting myself through the paces and making adjustments and we'll come back and see if I've managed to knock uh, much more of that if we've managed to get into the 54s even. So until the next part of the video, thanks for watching.
has been your Bristol best. So hello once again. Um, yes, I forgot to push the capture card. So I've just spent the last 20 minutes having a nice drive around the circuit and explaining all the setup and um, all that jazz. So let's let's do it again and uh, get it right this time. So right, straight from the off, let's have a look in the controls. And yes, we are running 480 degrees of rotation on the steering lock. So if you've got that um, in your wheel as well, you're on the right track. It will certainly make the force feedback feel much better. Um, going to let's take a drive around the circuit. Uh, the setup's already loaded in. I'll try and point out a few key areas as we go along. Just get a nice line as you come into this corner for the acceleration out of it. Let's carry that speed onto the finish straights, long straight, start straight, whatever you want to call it. I'm just looking for that boost, over boost to change gear. And then looking on the right hand side for this blue curve to just finish and we're going to start braking here down into second gear hook up the first part of this curve and try and run inside a little lift on the accelerator take some of this curve and then flatten the power as uh, it sort of bottoms out looking for the 50 yard board or the 100 yard board sorry down into second gear tiny squeeze the accelerator then into first gear hooking up this inside curve as we come round, squeeze the accelerator and then brake nice and hard, throw the car in, up into second gear, just lift off the accelerator and just let the car run wide and then back on the power as soon as you can feel grip. Get the car nice and straight as we come into the long, long straight and just allowing the car to run the least line of resistance and changing up on that red, red line really, or even past it, just holding on, holding on and then change gear. So we're going to look on the left hand side for the 50 yard board as we come into here and we're just going to take a little squeeze of the brake pedal, drop down into fifth gear, hook this inside curve a little bit, back on the power, looking for the middle lamp post, down into third, fourth, then to third, finally to second and then back on the power as we come out of there. Let the car run wide a little bit, last cone on the left down into second gear just waiting 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 back on the power clipping some of that inside curb stay on the right hand side of the circuit look for the blue curbs to arrive braking them in a straight line down into second gear hooking some of this curb on the inside and then braking again before you think you need to really try and be closer to the inside curb than that we'll take it one last drive a little bit faster just so you can see it in effect nice and a little bit of a lift back on the power it's a really nice feeling when you get that nailed right hooking up the inside Don't touch the brake through here. It just really helps the car accelerate and carry more speed if you don't touch the brake through that corner. It just rotates the car too much, you end up scrubbing too much um, speed and obviously you're trying to carry as much speed as you can out onto this long straight. The more speed you can carry out onto it, the more you'll get. See, 175. So only come down to set fifth gear through there. Just running too wide. So I have never hit 175 down that finish straight. It's purely down to the wind at the circuit. So let's go for another lap. <coughs> so 
So a 156.7 there. That's lovely through there. Just a nice line, a little bit of curve. Just a little lift and then back on the power. Yeah, I'm amazed how much effect the wind has, I really am. So to, to be able to see 175, definitely affected by the wind. Yeah, really interesting. My mistake. There we go, 155.8. So it's it's really is down to um, just running, just practicing and practicing and practicing. Uh, but yeah, that's a drive around the circuit. Let's take a look over this setup. So just looking over the setup, um, the tires generally run a little bit softer at the front, the, the uh, PSI, uh, but probably around 27.3 at the front and 27.5 at the rear just to try and get more front grip and um, the toe angle is just to try and get the car to brake better um, in a straight line on the approach of the corner um, I did try running you know you could try running uh, slightly less to get a little bit more response from the front end uh, but I think it's more stable uh, with just uh, 0.1 uh, toe I did try a slightly different camber at the front as well, but it doesn't really benefit the car through the left-hander. And at the rear, um, just got rid of the toe, didn't really have any um, effect on the car. And it just, just helps the straight line speed as well, just getting rid of that toe at the rear. And obviously reducing the cambers slightly just gives it a better straight line speed, better acceleration out of the corners. Moving to the traction controller, just um, increased TC1. Um, or TC uh, just up to five was running at three but around some of the corners especially down the back of the circuit the long left hand and sweeping corner just started to kick in um, cutting some of the power um, and it started to oversteer the car really um, it was allowing or it was allowing power to get through uh, when I really wasn't stable um, so just didn't increase that slightly the front, the front, the brake pads were always going to be running one on hot laps. If you're doing a stint over an hour long, you might want to go for two. Or you would run two between 60 minute race or a three hour race. But for anything like hot lapping or 10 or 20 minute laps um, or 20 lap races, 20 minutes long. Yeah, 20 minute long races. Uh, you, you just want to be using brakes one. Um, the anti-roll bars, both front and rear, I did spend a bit of time adjusting them but they didn't particularly make any difference um, in a benefiting way uh, to run them softer or harder, even at the rear. Um, I probably, yeah, just didn't, just didn't really help. And the brake bias works nice at 61. Uh, the wheel brakes tried increasing these and decreasing them and also the bump stop rate. Uh, but it works nice where it is to be honest but the rear definitely did benefit from going much softer both on the wheel rate and on the bump stop rate as well 
Um, spent a bit of time with the preload as well, but surprisingly it runs really nicely at 250, uh, which is very high and it's surprising how much, how little a difference coming down actually benefits. It doesn't really make any difference um, to how the car performs, so I just left it where it was. The dampers just changed the damper at the front uh, down to five. Didn't particularly like it where it was and it did seem to benefit the car. The rear is definitely benefited by going a lot softer all around. Did try running the bump stops down at number one or, or, and the fast bump, but it just ran smoother um, at number three all around. And the rear, the rear, um, the ride heights, a, a big difference in how the car performs and a strange one to see the rake higher at the front of the car than it is at the rear. Um, I've never really come across that before, but it works much nicer set like this. And if you imagine, I mean, I did try adjusting this so it looked like this. So for each three millimeters that you raise the front ride height is just like adding another rear wing slot. So when the car was running like this with three rear wing um, and 60 millimeters, you could do um, two rear wing and 63 millimeters, it's still like running um, three rear wing, um, but it, it just seemed to run much better um, rather than running it like that, uh, just, to, just to run three mil more ride height at the front without running four rear wing clicks. It's quite confusing, isn't it? But it just seemed to have less of an impact down the long straights, uh, not introducing more rear wing, but introducing a little bit of height from the front ride height. Um, and the brake, brake ducts, um, because of such a long straight at the back of the circuit, it just really gives uh, a chance for the, the brakes just to cool down. So it was able to run two at the front and two at the rear. You could probably run one at the rear, but I do find sometimes that the brakes do overheat over a longer session, um, so definitely opening up that rear brake duct a tiny bit more does benefit the lap. And that's the setup. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I've done this signing off before, but I did obviously mention, obviously like and subscribe. Uh, it does help build the channel, and then just the amount of money that's now that the channel's over a thousand uh, subscribers I have obviously started monetizing uh, my videos and for about a two two thousand views per video you would get about two dollars which is ridiculously low isn't it for the amount of time that I spend doing these videos the most amount of money generally is raised through adding adverts into the videos so You'll see I've strategically tried to add um, some adverts into the videos just to boost uh, the income from each video. I know they're a bit of a pain to, to watch during the videos, but it, it does make smaller viewers or smaller subscriber channels like mine add a little bit more uh, money to the channel um, for, because the videos don't have such uh, high views. Uh, but if you do bear that in mind when you watch the videos, that's at least you'll know why they're in there. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Um, I hope the new format works for everybody. Uh, people that prefer just to watch short videos and people that are interested in the longer videos. I hope it helps everybody. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I, hope I can do more uh, like this one uh, that's more in detail and uh, I hope you get more from it. But thanks for watching and as per usual, Ciao for now.